Yeah. The take home quiz you can put right in the folder for me. Yeah, put the take home quizzes in the folder. All right. So today, September 26th, happy Monday. Today we're talking about the product and quotient rules. That's going to be two new derivative rules for us. And then you're going to do some review of some pre calculus topics. You'll note that part of today is back in chapter one. Um, so it's going to be kind of a little bit of a schizophrenic back and forth through your book. Uh, we raced ahead to chapter four, and now we're going to go back and fill in some gaps and tackle some more derivative rules. Um, last class was our project check-in day. I think that was really productive for a bunch of us, and that's great. Um, so hopefully we keep making good progress there. Uh, the arbitration project is due Wednesday coming up, this next class. And then the trucks project is due Friday coming up. And then due today, uh, we just saw the uh, first take-home quiz. So throw that in the folder for me. If you do not have that take-home quiz completed, you see me right after class today. Um, OK, any questions on the calendar? 53. OK, so let's take a look at the top of page 53. In this class, we learned two more derivative formulas, the product and quotient rules. And we review three kinds of functions, power functions, polynomial functions, rational functions. All right, so just a notation reminder. When you see d over dx and then some brackets, it means the derivative of what's in the brackets. And again, we'll see that formally very soon. But for right now, we're just going to use it. Number one, we now expand our collection of derivative rules to include products and quotients of functions. Unfortunately, derivatives of products and quotients aren't as nice as derivatives of sums and differences. If they were nice, then what would be the answer to this? So this problem here says find the derivative of uh, 3x plus 2 over negative 2x minus 1. So I'm going to write equals here. So if we could just do derivative of top and bottom separately, what's the derivative on top? 3, and on the bottom, negative 2. And so if the derivative really were just 3 over negative 2, then that would mean that the, um, that would mean the derivative is always negative 3 halves, which means the slope of, of this function here in the brackets is always negative 3 halves. What's the only thing whose derivative is always negative 3 halves? What formula? A line, right? I mean, that's the only thing whose derivative is always negative 3 halves, right? Negative 3 halves plus 5, negative 3 halves minus 7. But, but there's no way this function in here is as simple as a line, right? I mean, it's, it's got asymptotes. It's, I don't know, just a very quick sketch, something like that. It's got changing derivatives, right? So unfortunately, you can't just naively take derivatives of quotients the way you might hope that you could. All right, so um, number two, uh, so I'm going to put a big line here. No good. Number two says the quote unquote rules that the derivative of f of x times g of x is as simple as doing f prime and g prime and multiplying them at the end. And then what we just did here with a quotient, the derivative of f over g just being f prime over g prime are simply not true. Let's put some angry lines through them. So do not do that. Cannot do right. Lots of, get get whatever anger you got stored up inside you. Get it out. Put lots of X's and things through that. It is no good. So number three tells us the real product rule. It says if you want to find the derivative of f of x times g of x, two functions with x's in them, you do the first function f of x. You multiply by the derivative of the second function, derivative of g of x. Then you add. That's kind of crazy g of x, that's the second function, times the derivative of f of x, the first function. I don't remember all those symbols. Uh, I remember this thing here in bold. The product rule says first times derivative of the second plus second times derivative of the first. Much more complicated than our sum rule or our subtract rule, right? You guys know what I'm saying when I talk about that? 3x squared plus 5x. How do you find the derivative of this? Right? You just do 3x squared becomes 6x, 5x becomes 5, and then you add them at the end, right? That's, that's really nice. That's how addition works. That's also how subtraction works, but it does not work that way for mul multiplication. We've got this new rule here. Okay, so let's try our brand new product rule in number four. What we're looking for is the derivative of, 
7x to the 4 plus 2x cubed minus 5x minus 1, that whole thing, times 4x squared minus 3x plus 8, that whole thing. You got two choices here. One thing you could do is distribute all the parentheses through, yes? And you get some big long polynomial, and you can take derivatives of polynomials all day. It's really easy. But another option would be to use our new um, product rule. So here it goes. First times derivative of the second. First, you copy the first in its entirety. Go ahead and write that there. It's going to be kind of big, so don't write too large. Times the derivative of the second. So we need the derivative of the thing in, uh, I'm going to highlight here. First is yellow, second is blue. So the derivative of the second. What's the derivative of blue? 8x minus 3. Everybody see it? First times derivative of the second. And then the strangest part of the product rule. What's the next symbol? Plus. That's really weird. Because we were taking the derivative of a product, right? So I, I'm not surprised to see a times. I've already written times. But I am surprised to see a plus. And then we do the second. So we copy the entire blue thing as is. And then we multiply by the derivative of the first. Derivative of yellow, also in parentheses. What is it? 28, 28x cubed plus 6x squared minus 5. Okay, that is the product rule. First times derivative of the second plus second times derivative of the first. Um, you could distribute all that stuff through and then clean it up. I'm happy with this. The calculus is done. The rest is algebra if you wanted to clean it up. Any questions on the product rule? Okay. Number five, the quotient rule. It says the derivative of a uh, function f of x over the function g of x equals, and you can see it's kind of big and kind of messy and kind of long, right? It's, there's a lot going on in this quotient rule. Um, I'm just going to skip ahead to the, the second version here. Uh, it says g times f prime minus f times g prime over g squared. Again, I don't memorize those letters. I, I know what the words are. I know how to translate that into English. So uh, I'm going to call these two functions um, top and bottom. So clearly f is the top and g is the bottom. So let's see if we can come up with the translation here. G, is that top or bottom? bottom, so that's bottom, times the derivative of the top, bottom times derivative of the top, and then the next symbol, minus, which makes it quite different from the product rule where it was a plus, minus, f is the top times the derivative of the bottom, all divided by, which one? The bottom squared. That's how it is in English, it's written in bold, bottom times derivative of the top, minus top times derivative of the bottom over bottom squared. A um, couple of ways people go wrong, a couple of common ways people go wrong here. They forget to put this denominator, this bottom squared. So when I do the quotient rule, that's the first thing I write. Because the top has a lot going on. G times F prime minus F times G prime. There's a lot of stuff for us to do up there. It's easy to forget at the end of the day to divide by bottom squared. So I'm going to do that first. And then the other thing people uh, mess up is the order in which they they multiply the, you know, one function copied and the other function is derivative, and you got to get the order right here. Whereas for the product rule, um, you know, I, I'm always going to write first times derivative of the second, but if you happen to write down the second times derivative of the first as the beginning part, no problem because it's addition, right? But a big problem if you get the wrong order here. So it always starts bottom times derivative of the top. Okay, let's give this a shot in six. It says find the derivative of 3x plus 2 over negative 2x minus 1. That's the formula we started today with. So this guy equals big fraction. And I'm copying the bottom. And it is getting squared. That's the first thing I do. Big fraction line, bottom squared.
Okay, so let's get the order right. Uh, in English, the first thing we're copying is which one, the top or the bottom? Bottom. Bottom times derivative of the top. So the bottom, negative 2x minus 1 times the derivative of the top. What is the derivative of the top? 3. I'm going to put parentheses, although we don't need it. Just usually we do. 3. The next symbol is strange. What is it? Minus. It's not clear to me why there's a minus sign in the middle of a quotient rule, right? This is a division problem, but turns out we need to subtract minus. And then the next thing we copy is which one? The top, 3x plus 2. And then we multiply by the derivative of the bottom, which is negative 2. There you go. Okay, so that's the quotient rule. The calculus is done. I do think we should spend a moment cleaning this thing up. I think it will get nicer. Okay, we're going to do two steps in one here. Uh, we're going to count the x's and then combine terms. Uh, multiplying here, 3 times negative 2x is negative 6x. And then over here, I've got subtract and then uh, a negative 6x. So I think that's a it's negative 6x and then a positive 6x. So the x's just vanish. 3 times negative 1, that's minus 3. And then plus 4. So all together, I think it's just a 1. So that's the simplified answer. That's the derivative of our original function. You could distribute in the denominator. And in fact, in the quotient rule, you'll always have the bottom squared. So if there's more than one term in the bottom, you can always distribute. I'm never going to. I don't think it ever goes anywhere fruitful. But distributing on the top, I generally will, because you might have terms that combine. In this case, things were really nice because the x is canceled. So distributing on the top is a good idea. On the bottom, not so much. And then the only other piece to this problem is this guy. Brand new notation. You have a guess as to what it means? Josh? That's it. Find the derivative of that function at x equals 4. So we haven't uh, wasted any time. We've done exactly what we needed to do first. That's to find the derivative of the function at a general x. And then we just have to plug in. So this becomes 1 over negative 2 times what number? 4. Minus 1 squared. That's it. So it just means take the derivative in general, and then when you're done, plug in 4 for x. Uh, so what do we get here? That's minus 9, 81. Um, oftentimes this x equals won't be included. There'll just be a 4 down there, and it's our job to realize, oh, it, it's whatever the variable is. In this case, it's x. It might have been a different letter. Okay, So that'll be a notation that we'll see more throughout the semester. Um, other common place people can go wrong on that problem is that they, uh, like if, if, if we didn't have this problem initially given to us, if it just said that, it might be tempting to say, oh, I know what that means. That means plug in 4. In some sense, it does mean plug in 4. But if we plug in 4 now uh, for all these x's originally, what do we get on top? So, derivative of, so if I'm just plugging in 4 at the beginning, upstairs as a 14, downstairs, negative 9. And then I say, oh, easy. What's the derivative of 14 over negative 9? 0. So don't do that. Right? Like, if you plug in in the beginning, you're always going to get a number whose derivative is always zero. So, got to make sure we take the derivative in general first and then plug in only after. Goodbye.
Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, so if you wanted to just have like one concluding equation. Let's say derivative of this thing equals one over a negative two x minus one squared. Mm -hmm. Other questions? So last thing, um, it's not enough to just know the product rule and know the quotient rule. You have to. You also have to know when they apply. So for example, if I gave you, um, uh, so we we don't have a derivative rule for ln of x just yet. We will soon enough. But what rule are we going to need to use to take a derivative of this thing? We need to use a quotient rule because it's x is on top and x is on the bottom. So that's clearly a quotient rule. Um, how about this thing? Uh, x to the fifth over 3x squared. You could use a quotient rule. Do we need to? We could cancel the x's. So what happens there? x cubed over 3. Do we need to use the quotient rule on that? No, because the bottom is just a number. And so this is really just a one third. In my mind, this is how I see it. And that's an easy power rule, right? The quotient rule will give you the right answer, but don't go around using the quotient rule every time you see a fraction. It's really about having x's on the top and x's on the bottom that don't just cancel out. And even something like this, um, five over two x to the four, you could use the quotient rule, but much easier would be to first write this as 5 halves x to the what power? Negative 4. And then it's a power rule. You'll get the right answer at the end of the day, but the power rule is a whole lot simpler than the quotient rule. Right? So it's really, if you have x's on top and bottom and you can't simplify, clean up at all, can't smush them together, then yeah, it's a quotient rule. But if you can make it look like a power rule, then do so. Okay, activities start on the next page. Again, uh, the beginning part is going to be about using our brand new product and quotient rule, and then you're going to see something completely um, uh, different where you'll review some of these functions from pre-calculus.